What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be covering a topic that maybe gets neglected a little bit when it comes to beginners in Revit and that is facade design in Revit. It's always nice to have a fun and interesting facade for your building but when you're a beginner you don't really know how to uh, well, jazz up or make your facade a bit more interesting and fun. So in today's tutorial I decided to create a uh, a quick little overview of what are some of the tools uh, and some of little tips and tricks on how to improve uh, your design for your facade. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's tutorial. Now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and also I make some uh, Revit courses. I have both beginner, intermediate as well as advanced level Revit courses. All are available on my website balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link uh, below the video just in the description. And also if you're interested in all of my Revit project files, I've got over like 400 files so far up on my Patreon page. Make sure to check that out as well. That's going to be the second link in the description just below the video. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So the first uh, set of tools that I'm going to be talking about are the inbuilt tools that are uh, quite common. Everybody has probably heard about them. And those are here on the wall tool, uh, but you have to access them by opening the drop menu. And then we have a couple of tools here, the wall sweep and the wall reveal. Uh, now these two tools allow you to basically create uh, any type of a horizontal or vertical uh, elements on your linear elements or swept elements on your facade. And uh, I'm just going to be going in depth into those and explaining how they work. But before we start that, I would just like to show you what is possible using these tools. Usually people think they're just for small little adjustments to the facade, uh, but they can actually make the whole facade. So here I have a project for uh, just one of my kind of school projects. And if we just spin this building around, as you can see, my kind of my project is this building over here. And if we zoom in here, you can see that the, fa the facade is quite interesting. Uh, between the windows, we have kind of these protruding uh, shapes or sweeps along the facade. Well, you can see it even better here on this back facade. And this is actually constructed out of just one simple wall, just a generic 300 millimeter wall. And then I have applied these uh, wall sweeps uh, all along the uh, all along the facade. So horizontally and vertically, and they just left enough room for the windows in between those. And it worked perfectly for uh, this particular project. So as you can see, these sweeps can actually, well, they can make the most of your facade if you use them uh, creatively and if you know how to incorporate them uh, correctly in your project. Project. So this is what is possible and now let's explore how does the sweep as, as well as the reveal tools uh, work. So let me just go here to a file and let's just start a new project, just start, start from scratch. Let's go to open uh, or, or new uh, project. And then for the template file, I'm going to be choosing the Balkan Arctic template, the metric version. Uh, if you're interested in getting my customized template with all of the settings and options all set up, and of course with a lot of families loaded in, so you don't have to uh, kind of set everything up for each project, everything is already there. Uh, I have this template, both the metric as well as the imperial version. It's available on my website, balkanarctic.com. The link is available in the description if you're interested in something like that. Okay, now let's continue by clicking OK to start that new project and let's rev it. Uh, let's let's let Revit load in. Here we go. And now let's place a simple wall here. So I'm just going to go to the wall tool and place a simple 400 millimeter wall here in the center and then let's go to the 3D view. Okay, so once we have the wall created, uh, now let's go ahead and place some uh, sweeps and reveals on this wall. So for placing these uh, facade elements, you go here to wall, uh, you choose the let's try the sweep. For example, uh, here you can choose the uh, sweep, do you want it to be horizontal or vertical? You just come in here, you click, and usually nothing happens. So you can kind of zoom in or out and that's usually going to kind of restart it. And then uh, let's see, let's hit the escape key once. There we go. So it's a bit annoying. I don't know why does it do this when placing it kind of 
goes into this weird mode so you kind of have to exit out of the command but there we go as you can see you can place these elements all along the the facade uh, now you can play around with the position or the height you get these temporary dimensions to help you along with that a little bit also you can flip it around which in this case doesn't make too much change because it's well, it's just a simple a rectangular sweep. You can also adjust it so you can change it. It doesn't have to go all the way to the other side. It can be shorter, longer. Uh, you, can, you can play around with that as much as you want. Uh, now, uh, also, just like these uh, sweeps, you can create reveals. So the same thing goes. You go here to wall reveal. And let's make a vertical one, for example. So you can go ahead and just place it like that zoom in and out a little bit, go to modify, there we go. So now we have that reveal. Now because we have a reveal and a sweep going over it, it looks like this kind of, the, the, the sweep is covering that reveal, but yeah, that's, that's the idea. You can also select the reveals as well, you can change their height, uh, you can play around with them a little bit, so maybe make it look like this. I don't know. There we go. So uh, that's how you place these sweeps and reveals. Now for your uh, sweeps, you will notice that you can't really set up the material here as an instance parameter. And if you go into edit type, that's where you actually have the ability to play around with the uh, material here. So you can choose a, a material of your choice. And also you have the option to choose the profile. So here it's currently set to the default profile. And here we don't really have that many uh, profiles loaded in, uh, well, not not for uh, sweeps, but you can load in a sweep profile, and then you can uh, you can use that. Uh, now, one big difference between horizontal and vertical sweeps and reveals uh, is the fact that you can include the. Uh, the sweeps uh, and reveals the horizontal ones in the wall type itself. So uh, let me go here to wall and let's choose one of the kind of the original walls. Let's see. Is it this one or I think it's this one. Let's let's try it out. I'm not really sure which type it is. Nope, not that one. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, this one has already the uh, a couple of reveals here included in the wall type. Now you can select the reveal, uh, but we don't really have the option to change that. We can't kind of play around with that reveal, uh, but it is included in the wall type itself. And if you increase kind of the, the wall height, it's just going to go from there. Oops. It's not going to allow us to go like that. There we go. So uh, some can be included and you can actually customize that and do that uh, fairly easily. And let me just go here to the wall. Uh, let's choose the 300 millimeter wall type. Uh, go here into edit type and then let's make this a bit smaller. And then we have this preview window, which shows you your wall and you can actually change it from a floor plan view uh, to a section view. And just like this, and then you can go here to structure, uh, go into edit, and there we have the option to modify the vertical structure of the wall. Now we can play around with the um, uh, with the layers, split regions, merge regions, but the most important ones for this particular case are the sweeps and reveals. So you can actually go here and add sweeps, so it looks like this, wall sweeps, it's kind of like a little table. Uh, you can add a new sweep, here you can play around with the profile, let's just stick with the default one. Uh, with the material, so you can choose a different material. Let's see. Oh, let's try the red light LED. <laughs> Anyways, here you can choose the base, either the top or the bottom, as well as the distance. So, uh, for example, if you measure from the base, you can type in here one, I think that's one meter. So when I hit apply, as you can see, there it is at one meter offset. You can flip it around if you want, so it's just going to go kind of up or down. So I'm just going to OK out of this, apply, OK, there we go. So now if we decide to place this wall, we can place it in the model. And if I just orbit around a little bit, you can see that there we have that kind of sweep following the, uh, following the wall. Now, uh, also one important thing to mention is uh, what you can do with these sweeps and reveals. And let's just, uh, we already have some here, so we can use these for the demonstration. We have the option to modify the returns, so basically how it goes back into your model. Now this is quite a simple profile so it's not not that uh, complicated so you can go here to modify returns you can click and then it 
basically it just it looks like it just goes forward a little bit but essentially what it's doing and I can demonstrate that here a little bit better so if I select one of these for example there we go so if you have a sweep that goes like this and you want to stop it here you don't want to have the this annoying opening so what you can do is select it go to modify returns uh, you can set the angle so let's try 45 degrees click and it's going to go back into the facade at the 45 degree angle which is really nice uh, you can also go and uh, you can return it at 90 degrees and then you just click like this with this knife and then it's going to go kind of straight down which is also kind of nice so uh, you have that option and also the same thing goes uh, here with the reveals so if I select this reveal make it a bit smaller uh, I can go here to modify returns uh, give it a minus 45 degree angle and let's see this trick there we go so it's going to look like this I really like this effect for the the reveal so you can make it kind of chamfered at the edge or something like that so it can look uh, really really nice so I'm quite happy with that uh, with that option as well Another really useful tool when it comes to creating facades in Revit is the option to create stacked facades or stacked walls. So what you can do here with the wall tool, if I just select the wall tool, uh, here on the bottom, so when you, uh, when you open up the, the wall types, we have the basic walls, and then we have the curtain walls and then finally we have the stacked walls and this is the one that's kind of the most common and as you can see when you place this wall it looks it basically looks like this so it looks like we have a couple of different walls stacked on top of each other now if you take a look at some of perhaps more common or uh, uh, more traditional facades you're going to notice that they usually have uh, one material at the bottom usually the uh, either up to the kind of the, the window level or uh, sometimes it can go all the way up to the kind of first floor level and they have different materials on the bottom and then different ones on top now this tool uh, uh, or this wall type allows you to do exactly that it allows you to create walls like that so you don't have to actually stack walls on top of each other you can combine that all inside of one wall and it doesn't have to be just two you can add more you can just go here into edit type and basically just like the, the previous one for the structure as you can see here we have the section view we have two types on top of each other and then when we go into structure you basically set up which wall you want to have and uh, for the the bottom one here the height is set to be automatic and the second one is variable so it can go uh, basically up to any height the, the the building requires and also you can play around with the offsets uh, flips and uh, so on uh, but basically that's how it works it has two walls on top of each other and then whenever you decide to place one of these walls well it automatically gets uh, placed here let's just quickly add uh, an additional wall here so let's insert a wall and for the the height of this wall let's choose something like uh, one meter and we also need to change the, the the name or here in the name it basically means the the, the wall type so uh, let's change it to something like the I don't know the the generic 300 millimeter type there we go it's kind of odd with this oh yeah that's the one with the with the sweep so let's not use that one let's try this one uh, and then also you can play around with the offset so uh, if I try point one, as you can see now it overlaps a little bit better now of course you you want to align this at least on one side usually on the interior side so that might be 1.12 I don't know 1.1 oh. yeah I guess this is correct there we go uh, so uh, we have something that looks like this so now if I just click OK apply OK as you can see this is what that uh, wall is going to look like so we have the variable one in the middle we have the fixed one on the bottom and the fixed one on top and this can make for an interesting facade and the best part is uh, whenever you go to the wall tool and decide to add more segments all of those segments are going to include that uh, that part so it's going to be really easy to apply this wall later on and if we change the height of the wall as you can see uh, that's that's what it looks like so always this part is always going to be variable and these the bottom and the top one are going to be uh, kind of fixed in their uh, fixed in their position uh, which is of course uh, really useful
And the next step that I would like to show you has to do with the curtain walls. So when it comes to curtain walls in Revit, they can be quite difficult to work with. So let's choose the storefront one because that's the that's the one that has all of the elements, uh, all of the, the kind of the parts included. Oops, <laughs> wrong project. There we go. So when you have curtain walls like this, they look, uh, as I said, difficult to work with. But you can actually create interesting facades using just curtain walls and even th this basic one. So for example, what you can do is if I just go here and use the tab key to select one of these panels, uh, you have the option to perhaps right click and then we have the select panels option and I can select all of the horizontal grid uh, panels. So that would mean to select all of these. Uh, now, because these are all pinned in place, we can unpin them by using this button here. And then, as you can see, they're no longer pinned in place and we can change the family. So if I change, just change this to a solid family, it's going to look like this. But if I turn this into realistic, okay, it's, it is realistic. So currently it's only white. But if I go here and over uh, select panels, along a horizontal grid. There we go. We can go into edit type and we can actually change it. So currently the material is default, but what you can do is you can change it and you can have either a different type of a glass. If you want to use a different type of a glass here, as you can see, we have many different ones and one of those is the mirror. So uh, I, I find this really cool because it allows you to have reflective panels. Now uh, they're going to appear as black because Revit doesn't uh, uh, preview or uh, uh, reflective materials uh, in the realistic mode unless you're using the uh, 2021 version. But if I go here into ray trace, it's going to show what that would look like. So as you can see now, it's reflective and it's, well, it looks really cool. One more facade design tip that I, will, uh, that I would like to share with you is something that might be a bit of a pet peeve for uh, me, myself personally, and that is when you have these balconies that look like this, usually you have some sort of a very thin uh, floor uh, over here, uh, some, something that's usually quite thin. Uh, in this case, it's 150 millimeters and it looks kind of flimsy, uh, at, at least uh, kind of uh, subjectively speaking. So what they like to do in order to make this uh, look a bit nicer uh, on the facade, I like to go here to the floor tool, open up the drop menu, and then go to the floor slab edge. Uh, now here you can modify the slab edge, you can actually use your own profiles. Here we have uh, just a few different profiles uh, which you can play around with. I'm just going to stick with the, uh, with the default one, and then you just come to this bottom uh, line of that floor, you click, you click and there we go. It's much, much thicker and I think it looks a bit more solid, uh, a bit nicer, a bit more elegant, especially with modern buildings. Uh, they, they tend to have these floors that kind of end up with uh, very thick edges, which are uh, obviously a lot thicker than the, the floor requires. So that's something that I like to kind of play around with a little bit. Uh, and of course, it's going to look like this on the bottom, which is exactly what you want. You don't want the whole floor to be thicker. You just want the edge. And as I said, I play around with the profile a little bit. This is obviously a bit too much. Uh, this is kind of like a foundation slab edge, but uh, that's the that's the effect that we have. And I think it does make the, the balconies look a lot nicer on the facades. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it for this quick little video on tips and tricks uh, on how to improve facade design in Revit. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. Do you have any tips and tricks that you like to do yourself? And maybe you can share it with the, the rest of us in the comment section below. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. And of course, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. Uh, there you can find a lot more useful Revit courses where I take the extra time to cover some of the more complex Revit topics in depth. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you with another tutorial in a few days. Have a nice day.